So friends, Katina Michael here from Arizona State University. I'm at the beloved surf beach in Kiama, New South Wales. And today we're going to talk proof of concepts and prototypes. What's the difference and what can we do with both of these approaches? Templates, whatever you want to call it. So typically in a commercial system, you're there to generate new ideas and to innovate. And you're testing your concept, you're testing your idea. And you use a proof of concept framework or approach to basically consider whether the idea is feasible or not. But you're supposed to be thinking kind of wacky, right? Kind of something brand new, inventive, even for the sake of inventiveness. And you don't really care at that stage if it's a commercial product or process that you're thinking about whether there's a market tied to it, you're just dreaming pretty much, and you're sketching out those ideas at a very high level. Now, if you want to turn those ideas into fruition and the idea takes mode or modality or form or a mold, you're basically going from a proof of concept to a prototype, right? And the prototype is that slimline version of that idea. It's more about usability, it's more about if there's a real market behind it, it's more taking form, it could take the format of wireframes. You've already run a few scenarios between the proof of concept and the prototype, but you can see the prototype, you can hold it, you can feel it in your hands, you've done some preliminary testing of it, you've gone beyond just an idea or a concept stage. And that's when you start to think use cases and you start to think, where could I apply this to? And is there a market? And all of these other things that make it real, that's when you bring in the venture capitalists to go, what do you reckon about this? Would it work? Is it viable? And you might be using at the beginning some paper, scissors, glue, to bring it together so that it looks like something. You might be thinking about colors. You might be thinking about some kind of high-level network architecture diagram or systems with working in concert with other systems. But in the public interest technology space, I'm going to say to you, the proof of concepts got to start with the user. It's not about thinking about something inventive for the sake of inventiveness. It's not about thinking, how much money is this going to make me? Actually, it's about real cool ideas with people. And traditionally, it was people that were designers, not professional experts that were designers. But we kind of use this idea of user experience design to say that there are a special crop of people that do this. But in fact, we've forgotten about the users. Now, in class this week, week four, we were talking about an article that was brought to my attention by Jumana Bugazella of Pivot for Humanity, written by a guy by the name of Mark Hurst. He talked about what's happened with UX and he said we've gone from user experience to user exploitation. Well, I kind of reckon that's happened because we're skipping that step at the proof of concept stage going we've got to talk to real people somewhere. We've got to identify a need somewhere. We've got to look around us in the landscape you know is this suffering from environmental degradation or is that place over there filled with homeless people or if i go down the street is the infrastructure okay and we've gone away from that to the fabricated and i'm going to argue public interest tech actually fuses this traditional notion of proof of concept going towards rapid prototyping and doesn't say forget about being inventive but be inventive with the user. Let the user participate in that inventiveness. And that's all I'm gonna say for this remark and reflection um, on proof of concepts, scenarios, virtual storyboarding, usability, towards rapid prototyping. Hope you've enjoyed that soundbite from myself. Um, PIT502 if you're interested, co-designing the future. Let's do that together. Thank you.